What's going on? Brian Tong here with your Google Licious for everything Google we can pack inside of a show. And yes, the craze is all about Pokemon Go right now, at least if you're in the US, New Zealand, or Australia, with launches in Europe and Japan coming soon. But wait, hold, hold on, guys. Okay, just uh, making sure my egg has hatched. Now, according to Similar Web, only two days after its release on July 8th, Pokemon Go was already installed on over 5% of Android devices in the US. If that doesn't seem like a lot, think again because that's already more installs than Tinder has on US-based Android phones. And we're all swiping right for Pokemon Go. Plus, 60% of the people who are using it daily means 3% of the entire US Android population is also using it daily. Now, the latest data shows that Pokemon Go is expected to have more daily active users than Twitter by the time you see this video. But like any great thing, there's also some downsides. Most people are setting it up with their Google account. But Adam Reeve has found it could be a huge security risk because Pokemon Go has full access to your Google account, including reading and sending emails as you, accessing your Google Drive docs, looking at your search and maps navigation history, accessing your private photos, and more. Now, some of you may not care and say, take over my life, Pokemon Go. It's not like they're really trying to take over your data, but access like that from any app is rare, and it's something you should be aware of. It's enough where some people are refusing to download the game, and if you want to, you can go to your Google security page, you can select Pokemon Go and remove to revoke all access. Now, in most cases, the game still works after this, but for others, it doesn't, so your experience may vary. Now, in a little bit of catch up from our hiatus last week, Android Police has posted a render of what the next Nexus phones will look like based on their sources. They claim there will be no camera hump, it will be entirely flush, and there will be a gentle curve on the edges of the backside of the phone. Both phones will have aluminum bodies, not polycarbonate, and the G logo may or may not exist on this final design. The codenames for the two phones have been confirmed as Marlin for the 5.5 inch phone and Sailfish for the smaller 5 incher, but we still don't know their final official names, expected release date, and how much they'll cost. Now, we've also heard rumblings that Google is working to control the hardware and software, just like Apple, for a future Nexus phone. But Android Police reports that Google is building two of their own Android Wear smartwatches with Google Assistant integration. The two watches will possibly be Nexus branded, with a targeted release sometime after the new Nexus phones are announced. The report also says one will be larger, sportier, and full featured with LTE and GPS connectivity. That one is known as Angelfish. The second one will be smaller in size without mobile data and GPS and is known internally as Swordfish. Both watches are expected to have circular displays and will not feature that ugly flat tire interface. Google might be looking for a signature Android Wear watch to be in the same conversation as the Apple Watch or Gear S2, so we'll see how this all comes together. And the Android world is waiting to see Samsung release the new Note 7. And here, Steve Hemstoffer gives us the first real look of the phone that backs up a lot of the renders we've seen. But this time, it's photos of what's believed to be an actual prototype of the Note 7. Rumored specs include a 5.8-inch QHD display, Snapdragon 823 for the US market, or an Exynos 8890 internationally, 6 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage, with a micro SD slot for expansion, plus a larger battery. Now, August 2nd is still believed to be the official date for an announcement with an Edge version of the Note 7 being a possibility as well. And a new report from the information says YouTube is making progress on an online TV service that won't require a cable subscription. Content partners that are firmly expected to be included are ABC, CBS, and ESPN, but Google is still in negotiations with NBC, Viacom, and Fox. Now, as far back as May, the unplugged service was rumored to cost under $35 per month. Another aspect of this service would include topic-specific YouTube channels that would be loaded with things like home improvement videos that could take place of TV networks like HGTV. Google's TV package is expected to launch in the next six to nine months. The report also says YouTube Red hasn't taken off the way they had hoped for, with trial subscriptions now being extended from 30 days to four months to attract more customers. Yikes. And Google also confirmed its recent acquisition of video and broadcasting platform Anvato, not to be confused with Aviato. I am a fan of yours, have been ever since you were at the helm of Aviato. You know Aviato? Yes. Aviato. My Aviato. Is there any other Aviato? Like I said, 
not to be confused. Now, Envato is a fully automated platform for media encoding, editing, and publishing. It also has software for live streaming broadcasts, and its current customers include NBC Universal, CBS, Fox Sports, and others. Google has not said how it specifically plans to integrate an Avato service, but it could potentially play into its upcoming TV one. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or to me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.